Chapter 12. Inside Information. For a long time, the dwarf stood in the dark before the door and debated, until at last Thorin spoke. Now is the time for our esteemed Mr. Baggins, who had proved himself a good companion on our long road, and a hobbit full of courage and resource far exceeding his size, and, if I may, so possessed of good luck and exceeding the unusual usual allowance. Now is the time for him to perform the service of which he had included in our company. Now is the time for him to earn his reward. You are familiar with his throwing style on important occasions, so I will not give you any more of it. Though he went on... A good deal longer than this. It certainly was an important occasion, but Bilbo felt impatient. By now he was quite familiar with Thrawn too, and he knew that he was driving at. If you mean you think it is my job to go into a secret passage first, oh Thrawn, Thrawn's son, Oaken Shield, may your beard grow even longer, he said crossly. So say so at once at the, um, and have done. I might refuse. I have got you out of two messes already, which were hardly an, um, in the original bargain, so that I am, I think, I already own some reward, but third time pays more for all, as my father used to say, and somehow, I don't think I should refuse, perhaps I have began to trust um my luck more than I used to in my low days, um, he meant last string um, before he left his house, his own house, but it seemed centuries ago, but anyway, I think I would go have a peep and have a peep at once and get it over. Now who's coming with me? He did not express a chorus of volunteers, so he was not disappointed. Philly and Killy looked uncomfortable and stood on one leg, but the others made no pretense pretense of offering except old Balin, um, the lookout man, who was rather uh, found, fond of the hobbit. He said he would come inside at least and perhaps a bit above the way too, ready to call for help if necessary. The most that came can be said to dance into this. They intend to pay Bilbo Hazem hands really handsomely for his services. Um, they had brought him to his, this a nasty job for them, and they did not mind the poor little fellow doing what if he would. If it would, it, if he would, um, but they would all have done their best to get out of trouble if he got into it, as they did in the case of the trolls at the beginning of the adventures before they had any particular reason for be grateful of him. Um, there it is, dwarves are not heroes, are calculating folks, always a great idea of the value of money, some are tricky and treacherous and pretty bad lots, some are not, but they're decent enough people like, um, Thrawn and company, if you don't expect too much. The stars, when the coming out behind them, in a pale of swipe boarded with black and with the hobbit clipped through the enchanted door and stole into the mountain. It was far easier going to the than he expected. This was no goblin entrance or roughwood elves cave. It was a passage made out by dwarves, um, at the height of their wealth and skill, straight as a ruler, smooth floored and direct to eat some distant edge of the blackness below. After a while, Balian played Bilbo. Good luck. Then stopped where he could still see the faint outline of the door, and by the uh, thick um of the echoes of the turn tunnel, hear the rustle of the wind, whispering voice of the others just outside. Then a hobbit slipped off his ring, and warned by the echoes to take more than the hobbit's care to make no sound, he crept noisily down and noiselessly um down down into the dark. He was trembling with fear, but his little face wet was set in grim. Already he was a very diff different hobbit um from the one that had run out without a um pocket handkerchief from back end long ago. He had not had a pocket handkerchief for ages. Um he lo loosened his dagger in its dress and tightened his belt and went on. Now you are in for at, at last, Mr. Baggins. Um, Bilbo Baggins, he said to himself, you went to put your foot right in it at night of the party, and now you have gone, got to pull it out and pay for it. Dear me, um, what a fool I was and am, um, uh, and um, and said the least Turkish part of him. And I have also really no no use for Dragon Garden treasures, and the whole lot would, could stay here forever if I only could wake up and find this beastly tunnel was my own front hole at home. He did not wake up, of course, but went still on and on until the old sign of the door behind it faded away. He was altogether alone. Soon he t thought it was beginning to feel warm. Is that kind of a glow I seem to see coming? Um, 
right ahead down there. He thought it was as he went forward and grew and grew until there was no doubt about it. It was a red light steadily becoming redder and redder. Also, it was now undoubtedly hot in the tunnel. Wisps of vapor floated up past him and um, began to sweat. A sound too began to throb in his ears, uh, sort of bubbling like the noise of a large pot galloping in fire, um, mixed with a rubble, um, a like gigantic tomcat, um, Tomcat purring, the skewed, unmistakable gurgling noise of some vast animal slowing in its sleep down in the red glow in front of him. It was at this point that Bilbo stopped going on from there was the bravest thing he ever did. The tremendous things that happened afterwards were not uh, as nothing compared to it. He fought the real battle in the tunnel alone. Before he ever saw the vast danger that lay in wait. At uh, any late after um, he, uh, ev- a short halt go on he did. And you can picture him coming to um the end of the tunnel, an opening of much the same size and the shape of the door b- above, though it peeps the hobbit little shape as the door above, though it peeps the, ho- the hobbit's little head. Before him lies the greatest bottle most um cellar of dungeon hall on the ancient dwarves right at the mountain's root. It is almost dark so that it is vastness can only be dimly guessed by r- but rising from the nearest side of the rocky floor there in a great girl. The girl was smog. Um, there he lay, a vast red golden dragon, fast asleep. A uh, thumbing came from his jaws and nostrils, <coughs> and wisps of smoke, and, but his fires were low in slumber. Beneath him, under all his limbs and his huge cold tail, and about him on old piles and pr- of precious things, gold wrought and unwrought um, gems and jewels, and silver red stained in ruddy light. Small Glay with wings folded like an immeasurable bat, under parts of his long pale belly crusted with gems and fragments of gold from his long lying of his, on his costly bed. Behind him were the walls of where nearest um, could dimly be seen coats of ma- mail, um, helms and axes, um, swords and spears hanging, and there in rows stood great jars and vessels filled with a wealth that could not be um, guessed. To say that Bilbo's breast was taken away is no dis- description at all. There were no words left to express his exact staggerment since uh, my oh, men changed their language that they learned of the elves in the days when all the world was wonderful. Bilbo had heard it how to tell and sing the dragon hordes before, but the splendor, the jealous, the glory of such treasure had never yet come home to him. His heart was filled with fierce with enchantment and with the desire of dwarves. He gazed motionless, almost forgetting the frightful guardian at the gold beyond um, price and count. Um, he gazed what seemed an age before dawn, almost against his leo. He stole from the shadow of the doorway across the floor to the nearest edge. The mounds of treasure above him in the sleeping dragon lay a dire menace even in his sleep. He grasped up two handled cup as heavy as he could carry, and cast one fearful eye upwards. Smog stirred a wink, opened a claw, and rubble of his snowing changed the tone. Then Bilbo fled, but the dragon did not wake yet, not yet, but shifted into another dream of greed and violence. Lying there in his stolen hole, which the little hobbit toiled back, the long tunnel his heart was beating, and a more fe- fevd, um shaking was in his legs. Then, than when he was going down, but still he clutched on um, the cup, and his chief thought was, "I have done it. This will show them more like a gro- grocer than a burglar, indeed. We will hear. Well, we'll hear no more of that." Nor did he. Balin was overjoyed to see the Hobbit again, and as delighted as he was surprised, Bilbo picked up and carried him out of the into the open air. It was midnight and clouds had covered the stars, but Bilbo lay with his eyes shut, gasping and taking pleasure in the feel of fresh air. <coughs> again, and hardly noticing the excitement of the dwarves or how they praised him and patted him on the back, but and put themselves on all their families and generations to come out for his service. Um. The, the dwarves were still passing the cup from hand to hand and taking delight lead of the recovery of their treasure when suddenly a vast rumbling walk up in the mountains underneath as if an old volcano had, uh, had made up his mind to start eruptions once again. The door behind them was pulled nearly to and blocked from closing with the stone. But up the long tunnel came the dreadful echoes from far down the depth of the billowing and trampling and that made the ground beneath them tremble. 
Then the dwarf forgot their joy and their confidence and um, boast um, of a moment. Before he cowered down in the fright, Smog was still to be reckoned with. It, <clears throat> it does not do to leave leave a live dragon um out of your calculations if you live near him um dragons may not have much real use for all their wealth but um session um, but they know um they know it to announce of as a rule especially after long possession and smog was no expression exception um he had passed from an uneasy dream in which a warrior although so insignificant in size but provided with a bitter sword and great courage figured most unpleasantly to a doze and from a doze to a wake wide wakening there was a breath of strange air in his caves um could there be a draught from that little hole he had never felt quite unhappy about it though it was so small that and now he glared at it in suspicion and wondered why he had never caught Never blocked it up of late, and he had a ha have um fi fancied um he had caught the dim echoes of a knocking f sound from far above. Then came down though his lair, he stirred and stretched forth the neck to, to sif. Then then he missed the cup. Thieves, fire, murder! Such a thing um has not happened since they came first. He came to the mountain. His rage versus description, the sort of rage that is only seen to be rich forks that um they have um the sort of rage only seen um, more than they have they can enjoy suddenly lose something that they had um they had long and but um have never before used or wanted. His, his fire belched forth, the hole smoked, he shook the mountain roots, he thrust his head in vain at the little hole and then coiling his legs together. Roaring the thunders underground, he sped from his deep lair through its great door out into the huge passes of the mountain place and up towards the front gate. To hunt the whole mountain till he had caught the thief and had torn and trampled him um, was, only, was his only thought. Well, his one thought, he issued from a, this, the gate. The waters rose in fierce, whistling dream, um, and up he thawed, blazing into the air, and settled the mountain top in the spot of green and scarlet fame. The dwarves heard the awful rumor of his flight, um, and they crouched against the walls of the greasy turrets, um, clinging under boulders, hoping somehow they, to escape the frightful eyes of the hunting dragon. There they would have all be killed if it had not been for Bilbo once again. Quick, quick, he gasped. The door, the town. Uh, it's no good here. Roused by these words, they gave. They were just about to might creep inside the tunnel when Biffer gave a cry. My cousins, Bomber and Buffer, we have forgotten them. They are down the valley. They will be slain, and all our ponies too, and all our stores lost. Moaned others. We cannot. We can do nothing. Nonsense, the drone. Recovering his dignity, we cannot leave them. Get inside, Mister Baggins and Balin. Um. And you too, Philly and Killy. The dragon shan't have all of us. Now you others wear the robes. Be quick. Those were perhaps the worst moments they had been through yet. The horrible sounds of Smog's anger was echoing in the stormy hollows um, far above at any moment. He might come blazing down or fly whirring around and find them there. Near the prairie's cliff edge, um, hauling madly up the ropes. Up came Buffer and still all was safe. Up came Bumper puffing and blowing while the ropes creaked. And still all was safe. Up came the, some tools and bundles of stones and then danger was upon them. A whispering noise was heard. A red torch touched the points of standing rocks. Um, the dragon came. They had barely time to fly back to the tunnel, pulling um, and dragging in their bundles. When Strong came hurtling from the north, licking the mountainsides in his flame, beating his great wings with a noise like a roaring wind. His hot breath shriveled the grass before the door, and um and drove in through the crack they had f left to scorch them as they hid um they hid flicking flickering um fires leaped up and black rocks shadows danced and they then felt darkness fell as he passed again the pony screamed with terror brushed the ropes and galloped wildly off the dragon swooped and turned to pursue them and was gone that will be end of their poor beasts um that throw in here we shall have to stay unless anyone fancies trapping um the long open miles back to the river with smog on the watch it was not pleasant thought they crept farther down the tunnel, and they, then there they lay and shivered. Thought it was worn and stuffy. Until dawn came pale towards the clock of the door, 
Every now and again, though through the night, they could hear the roar and of the flying dragon grow and then pass and fade. He, as he hunted round and round on the mountainsides, he guessed from the ponies and from the traces from the camps. He had discovered that men had come up from the river, and the lake had the lake and had scaled on the mountainside from the valley where the ponies had been standing, but the door.